Welcome to Plush Art Studio. I'm Brittany Freeman and today we're going to be making this Maltese puppy plush. If you don't already have this pattern, it's available in my Etsy shop which is linked below. If you do, gather your materials and let's get started. This pattern is an instant download which can be printed immediately after purchase. Once you've printed your pattern, lay out the pages on a flat surface ensuring that all of the pattern pieces are lined up. Next, you're going to carefully tape all of your pieces together. Now go ahead and cut out all of your pattern pieces. Before cutting out our pattern pieces, it's important to determine the direction of the fur's grain. Lay your fabric down, backing side up, keeping in mind the direction that the grain is pointing. The grain on my fabric is pointing downwards, so when I place my pattern pieces, I'm going to ensure that the arrow on the pattern piece is also pointing down. Once my pattern pieces are laid out, I carefully pin them to the backing of the fabric. Next, I use a lightly colored marker to trace all of my pattern pieces and remove the pattern from the backing. Next, we're going to repeat this process on the flip side of any piece that says times two mirrored. Once we have all of our pieces laid out and traced onto our fabric, it's time to start cutting. I like to use a small pair of embroidery scissors for this step because it gives me a lot of extra control. When cutting faux fur fabric, it's important to remember not to cut the actual fur and to just cut the backing of the fabric. This will keep your fur from having blunt edges. Once I have all of my pieces cut out of my faux fur, I like to take an extra step and trim all of the fur off of the 1 8 inch inseam. This gives us a nice clean edge for sewing. Now that I've got all of my faux fur pieces cut out, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my ear linings using this beige muslin. For hand sewing, I like to use a heavyweight upholstery thread and the thread wax. For the purpose of this video, I'll be using a black thread so that you can see it, but I do recommend for your own hand sewing to use a coordinating thread color. Now that it's time to start sewing, we're going to start by lining up our two center belly pieces. Once they're lined up, you can use pins or clips to hold them together, making sure that there's no fur sticking through the seam. At this point, you can decide whether you want to hand sew or machine stitch your project. I personally like to hand sew the entire project and then go back and reinforce some of the seams that I think could use some extra durability with a machine stitch. Hand sewing gives you a lot more flexibility and control over how much fur is coming through your seams so you don't spend a lot of time picking fur out of them later. Here I'm using a blanket stitch on this seam but feel free to use whatever stitch you're most comfortable with. Here's what these two pieces look like when they're assembled. As you can see there's a little bit of a curve to the final product. Next, we'll be attaching the legs, so it's important to determine which side is the front and which side is the back of this piece. The front side of this piece is going to be pointed and the back side is going to be blunt. You can also determine this by looking at the pile of the fur, which should be pointed towards the back of the plush. Now we're going to be attaching our inner leg pieces, making sure that the feet are pointed towards the front of the plush. Here's a look at this piece now that it's fully assembled. Next up, we're going to be attaching the body to our inner leg structure. Open up your inner leg structure so that the body can be attached right sides together. You're going to start by sewing from the chest all the way to the tail, leaving the bottoms of the feet open. This is one of the seams that I like to reinforce using a machine stitch because if this toy is going to be played with, this seam tends to be put under a lot of stress. Now that we've attached the body to the legs on both sides, it's time to move on to the feet. As you can see, if you're using a longer piled fur, there's a lot of hair sticking out the bottoms of the feet that we left open. That can make this next step just a little tricky, so we're gonna try and stuff as much fur into the foot as we possibly can before we start sewing. It's also important that you check the paw pad pieces to make sure that the grain of the fur is facing the back of the plush. Once you have it all lined up and the fur is stuffed inside the foot, go ahead and sew all the way around the paw pad. Because it's so small, this piece can be particularly difficult to machine sew, so I do recommend hand sewing this portion. Then we're going to repeat this process on all four feet. Next up, it's time to add our tail. In order to do this, we're gonna need to line up the tail with a spot marked on our pattern. We're gonna wanna attach these pieces right side together, which means folding the tail inside the plush to make the attachment. Repeat this on both sides and then pull the tail pieces outside of the plush again. Next, we're going to be sewing the seam all the way around the tail. This part can be really tricky with a longer pile fur, so if you're using a long pile fur, I do recommend leaving the tip of the tail open and closing that up after we've turned the plush right side out. This will not only make it easier to sew, but it'll make it easier to turn your plush. Next up is the chin. We're going to start by sewing it together from the nose all the way to the neck. Now we're ready to add the head gusset. 
It's extra important to make sure this piece is properly aligned, so I like to start by attaching it at the nose seam. Once you've attached the gusset using pins or clips, it should look a little something like this. Now it's time to start sewing. This is another more complicated piece, so if you are using a machine to work on this project, I do recommend hand sewing this portion. Once you're done, your plush should look a little something like this, and it's time to start turning him right side out. Most of the plush can be easily turned right side out using just your hands, but I do recommend using a wooden dowel or a chopstick to turn the feet and the tail. Be gentle and work slowly while you're doing this so you don't accidentally rip one of your seams. This is what you should look like when you're done, and let's not forget if you left the tip of your tail open, now is the time to sew that shut. I prefer using a ladder stitch for all of my external closing stitches, but you can use whichever stitch you're most comfortable with. The ladder stitch is fun because you get to do this little zip close at the end. At this point I like to go over the entire plush with a soft bristled comb to make sure that there's no fur stuck in any of the seams. Next up we're going to be adding our eyes and nose and I like to start by adding a little polyfill just to the head of the plush to give it some shape so that we can figure out where we want to place those pieces. This stuffing is going to be removed in a little bit so you don't have to be too perfect about it, you just want to get an idea of the shape of the head so you can determine exactly where you want to place your eyes and your nose. Next I like to brush all of the hair away from the area I intend to place the eyes. This helps to make sure that the area isn't obscured so that I can ensure that the placement of the eyes is even. This step isn't necessary but it's very helpful. You can use either an eye placement tool that you've purchased online or you can make one yourself by gluing a safety eye to the end of a pin which is what I've done here. This is really helpful for determining the placement of your eyes without leaving any marks. Once you're satisfied with your eye placement, it's time to select your eyes. I am using an 18 millimeter brown safety eye. Safety eyes come with a lockable backing which prevents the eye from being pulled from the plush. Before removing my eye placement pieces, I like to pull them about halfway out and use a marker to mark the spot where they were inserted, which just gives me a more clear idea of where I need to insert my awl. Once it's marked, you can take out your eye placement pieces and you are ready to poke a hole with your awl. An awl is simply a sharp metal tapered tool which makes it easier to poke holes for adding things like eyes and noses. If you don't have an awl, it's perfectly fine to use scissors for this step. Once you've inserted the eyes, we're going to remove the stuffing from the head and flip the head inside out so that we can attach the backings of our safety eyes. If your backings look like mine, they can be a little bit tough to attach, so just remember that you need to push really hard until they click a couple of times and the eye is fully secured. Safety eyes with metal prong backs are a lot easier to install. The backs just slide right on as you're about to see when we install the nose. Next it's time to select and install our nose. I am using a 20 millimeter safety nose and this one comes with a metal backing with prongs. We're gonna be repeating the same process that we used with the eyes. The placement of the nose leaves a little bit less guesswork as it should be placed exactly where the head gusset meets the seam at the tip of the nose, which would be marked as point M on the pattern. Once we've attached the nose, we can flip the head inside out and add the backing the same way that we did with the eyes. Then flip the head right side out again, give the nose a little straighten, and we're ready for the next steps. Now it's time to stuff our plush. I am using a polyfill stuffing, but you can use whatever type of filling you prefer. I recommend you play around and figure out what your preference is for how firmly you stuff your plush because this will directly reflect how soft the final product is. When you're stuffing the narrow areas like the legs or the tail, start by using very small pieces of your stuffing and you can use either a chopstick or a dowel to shove those pieces down to the bottom before moving on to the next small piece. Next it's time to grab our length of 24 gauge wire. I've used needle nose pliers to round the ends of this wire so it doesn't poke through the end of the tail. 
Now I'm simply running the wire through the entire length of the tail to make the tail poseable. This makes it possible for the tail to have that signature over the back curl that Maltese's are known for. After that, we're ready to close up. I like to brush all the hair out of the way, and again, I'm going to use a ladder stitch for the closing. The next step is called soft sculpting. It's completely optional, but can really make your plush look more professional. All you're going to need is an upholstery needle and upholstery thread. Start by tying off your thread at the base of the neck and then inserting the needle into the spot where it was tied off. The needle should then exit through the inner corner of the left eye. This may take a few tries at first, but with some practice it will get easier. Once we've retrieved our needle, we're going to reinsert it about a millimeter inwards and the needle should exit again through the back of the neck. Once you've retrieved your needle this time, if you pull the thread tightly, you'll notice that the eye sinks in just a bit, giving the impression of eyelids. You're going to repeat this process again with the right eye and then tie off at the back of the neck. How tightly you pull your thread is a personal preference depending on how deep you like the eyes to be sunken. Now that we've got the eyes set, it's time to start grooming. I like to start by giving them a quick brush with a soft bristled brush, then I section off the area at the top of the nose and trim that first. This fur should be trimmed short enough that it's not overlapping the eyes. I always like to trim just a little bit of fur at a time. You can always remove more, but you can never put it back. So I do small trims and then brush the hair back just to see what it looks like before trimming more. Here, I'm just continuing to trim around the eyes to make sure that they're not obscured. Next, it's time to shape out a mouth. I make a part down the center below the nose and sort of part away from where I want the chin to be. I pull away any hair that is caught in the seams before starting to trim. I give the chin its shape first by trimming from side to side and then going from back to front. Next, I trim the hair on the lips on either side. This is trimmed in a taper, getting shorter as we move closer to the nose. Again, I'm starting just by trimming a little at a time, getting shorter as I go. This step will be repeated on both sides of the mouth. Next, I shorten up the hair around the neck to give the head a nice rounded shape, and then I move on to trimming the feet. Now that we're done trimming, it's time to move on to the ears. I take one of my fur and one muslin earpiece and pin them both right sides together. I sew all the way around the ear, leaving the top open so it can be turned. Once I'm finished sewing, I turn the ear right side out and repeat the process with the second ear. Next, I give the ears a little trim to make them more round and make sure that they have less shaggy edges before attaching them to the head. I part the hair away from the side of the head and then use pins to test out ear placement until I'm happy with where they're located.
Once I'm happy with their placement, I use my needle and an upholstery thread and attach the ears using a whip stitch. After trimming up any stray hairs and giving him a little brush, your Maltese puppy is done! Now's your chance to get creative with outfits, bows, collars, or whatever you want to really make this project yours. I hope you enjoyed this Sew Along Maltese Puppy project. Please hit like or follow if you'd like to see more projects like these with the Plush Art Studio. Thanks for joining!